had a fella ask me not long ago, Bill, if you were in a tournament and you needed one fish for a limit, what lure would you go to? Well, that's easy. Depending upon the depth, wind, and current, I would go with a black and blue 3 8 or half ounce Bass Pro Shop tungsten jig. And the color that I would select would be black and blue. And what I would attach to it would be a swimming elite chunk in the same color, black and blue. Now, this size combination and color is universal that works any place, any time, any kind of water, unless it was just chocolate. And I have as much confidence in this outfit as I do in anything I have in my boat. Now, speaking of baits, here's another good one. Why do bass strike buzz baits? Yep, buzz baits are quite unique. They possess both triggering and attracting qualities. They're big time attention getters. Yep, attracting qualities are those qualities of allure that create attention and triggering qualities are those that cause the fish to strike. Every lure must have both of these qualities if it's gonna catch fish. If the lure has only attracting qualities, a fish would only be drawn to it, but never try to hit it. If the lure only had triggering qualities, it wouldn't catch fish because the fish might never notice its presence. I know this bait is constantly on the move and a bass doesn't have a lot of time to size it up. It's something to eat and he reacts to it in a mighty big way. Come on out of there, buddy. You little old soft biting thing, you. Eh? Woo! <laughs> so, he went, just barely hit it when he hit it. Come on back here where I can get to you. Woo! Pretty fish, too. Yes, sir. All right, that fish just barely tapped it. <laughs> okay, buddy, see you. Doesn't look like it's, we're getting sun, then we get clouds. What we're using, we're using black and blue. Black holds its identity extremely well, and of course blue, blue light travels the farthest through water. And so this combination works extremely well. And we've got it pegged with a 3 16th ounce weight. And we've got a sinker bobber right here, sinker stop right here to keep it pegged, climbing up over that cover. So it's a good combination. Oh, so him. Yes, sir. Nice one. Like water up my face, I don't care. That is a good bait. That's a nice fish. Yes. Okay, buddy, see ya. Doesn't matter if it's seen it's cloudy or sunny, that sun just keeps going in and out. But that's a good color because it holds its identity real well. It's black and blue. It's a mighty good color. Whoa, that was fun. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I ran into a guy out at Bass Pro Shop. And the first thing out of his mouth was, he said, do you ever go fishing and get skunked? And the first thing out of my mouth was, are you crazy? <laughs> I do that more than I care to remember. 
Then he asked, what do you do when the fish won't bite? Well, I told him these five things that are really important. First, you must mentally turn a negative into a positive. Second, slow down. By doing this, you'll fish the areas much more carefully and methodically. Third, fish slow-moving lures and make several casts to the same area. Fourth, psych yourself into believing that you're going to find them somewhere. What this does, it helps encourage you to keep trying. Believing projects success. Fifth, make it a fun and productive trip regardless if you catch fish or not. Learn something. Fish some other areas. Look for new spots. Try out that new bait you just purchased. Experiment. Tell you what this does. It'll pay off when you least expect it. Whoa! <laughs> where are you going? Crazy is where he's going. <laughs> Did you see him blow up there and grab it? He wanted it, didn't he? He wanted that. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, boy. That was fun. Mr. Crazy. Come here, Buster. Chunky. He liked it, though, didn't he? Yes, she did. Healthy, too. Pretty little thing. See you around. Whoa! That was a good fight there. He hit that bait as soon as it hit the water. Dropped it in and boom! Mike McClellan designed these G Finesse hybrid hooks. This is a three off finesse gamakatsu wide bend. It's a nice hook. Talking about being skunked. Have I ever been skunked? The nerve of that guy. I'm gonna tell you something. He hadn't been a fast pro shopper. I'd have, I'd have probably, I'd have probably done exactly what I did. Tell the truth. <laughs> no one, and I mean no one, catches fish every time they go. No one except uh, Mark Zona. Bill. Fortunately, I heard that, my friend. I don't know if I wanted to hear that, but I did hear that. But you are right. Oh, are you ever? You don't catch them every time you go out. Here's a question concerning your electronics. How much do you depend on your electronics with all your years of fishing experience? Well, I depend on them as much as I do. My outboard motor getting me up the lake 15 miles and a 20 mile an hour headwind. <laughs> Seriously. However, I will say, experience is one of the greatest teachers in the world. Experience has taught me over the years how to be versatile, how to adapt to the seasons, how to fish different bodies of water. But with all that experience, my electronics have made my fishing so much easier and so much more productive. My electronics tell me things I never knew. They've definitely made me a much better fisherman. Bottom line, I believe both experience and electronics go hand in hand. I absolutely do. As you can see, this water is kind of funky. It's got a good bloom on it. So we're using a larger bait. And the reason for that is the fish can see it so much better than a smaller bait. In other words, it creates a much bigger image. Now you're probably asking yourself in this off-colored environment, why in the world would I not be using Say a big spinner bait, something that's putting out a lot of vibration, or maybe a, a large crankbait, or something that uh, moves a lot of water, something that's creating some type of a sound. Well, there's one good reason. The bass here are very, very inactive. They're not in a chasing mood. And you'll be surprised just how many more fish you can catch if you slow down and present slow presentation type baits when they're doing uh, what they're doing today. Yeah, there's a fish right right there. He's that in that stuff. Coming right out to me. You have to go. What 
Where are you going, rascal? Get out of that stuff. Easy. I will shake it here. Woo! Is that a big fat one? Nice one. Yes, you are. Bye bye. Got one here about your monofilament line. How often should you replace the line on your reel? You know, that's probably the number one concern of most anglers. Fortunately, the answer is relatively simple. Naturally, it depends on how much you fish your line. As long as it's stored out of direct sunlight and heat, monofilament line is virtually ageless. Now, according to extensive research, monofilament line begins the breakdown process the minute you spool it up and you start fishing. Many things like oil, bug spray, and sunscreen lotion won't damage most lines. But the sun's ultraviolet rays, especially nylon, heat and oxygen accelerate the process. In the case of nylon, mono exposure to sunlight causes loss of tensile and knot strength, stretch, and flexibility. You can usually tell when the sun has taken its toll, when the line becomes brittle or begins to change color. Example, when clear line begins to yellow or colored line fades. There we go. Get out of that cover. Oh, that's a better one. Go with my baits. I'll get them in a minute. Come in here, bait. Don't lose my baits. Got a fish on. I'll get my baits. I <laughs> can get my baits and the fish too. Nice one. There's my baits. Got them. Big old fish, too. Come here, big old. Whoa, big fat one. Come here, baby. Oh, don't bite me. You like that bait, don't they? Isn't that nice? Pretty fat chunky fish. Okay, let's go bye-bye. Some nice fish on a fantastic little bait. <laughs> As always, I surely hope the Q&As we've covered today will provide you some insight. I learned a long time ago that one of the best ways to become a better fisherman is to give other fishermen the third degree at every opportunity. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.